H2K Infosys provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys supports 100% job-oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time pay, lifetime access to live classes and videos. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For free demo class, visit h2kinfosys.com. Welcome to another video of H2K Infosys. In this particular video, we'll see the concepts on the Log4j API. Log4j API is, is basically used for the purpose of logging information at runtime. So the Log4j API will have a lot of sub interfaces or other child interfaces and, and methods and classes which can be used for the purpose of logging information at runtime. So let us look at the theoretical part of the Log4j API first. Log4j is a third party API which can be integrated with uh, Java language and uh, the Eclipse ID for the purpose of logging information. And it logs information at runtime. That means when we run the class file, the logging information is created. Logging information means it will create log files with information such as the time of execution, and the date of execution, etc. Logging information can be for development codes or for testing scripts. Uh, getting the log information helps us to understand the root cause of failure or success of a test script or a development code. Now, for example, we run a batch. We do a batch run. There are, might be thousands of test cases running in a batch run. If a particular test case fails or a test script fails rather, the other dependent test scripts might also fail because of that. So let's say there are innumerable test scripts which are dependent on a particular test script, for example. So if a particular test script fails and because of that, the other test scripts, the thousand other or hundred other test scripts are also failing, we need to find out actually which is the test script responsible for failing the rest of the test cases or which is the test script responsible for failing the dependent test scripts. So in this particular manner, the log information gives, gives us immense knowledge that which particular test script has failed and because of the test script failure, how are, are the other test scripts failing? So this kind of log information makes our lives easier and it basically makes our uh, testing process simpler. So getting the log information helps us to understand the root cause of failure or success of a test script or a development code by itself. Coming to the next part, Log4j was created for Java language and it was created for one of the projects in Europe. And since the usage of Log4j was very advantageous for Java, it was also made for other languages too. So that means Log4j was also made for C, C Sharp, etc. Log4j has an inbuilt class called the logger class and this particular class called the logger class can be used to log information at runtime. The logger class has a method called the getLogger method. The getLogger method is basically used to create logs for a particular class. So we'll be using the getLogger method in order to create a logging information for a particular class that we create. There's an interface in the Log4j API called the Appender interface, which has classes in order to create logs in the console or create logs in the R or create logs in the HTML format. So these classes which implement the interface, that is the Appender interface, are the console or, or R or the HTML class respectively. That means these appenders are responsible for creating logs. The logs can be created in console of Eclipse or in create logs in the R format. The R format can be opened with the notepad or create logs in HTML. So this appender interface is implemented by certain classes. And these classes which implement the appender interface are responsible for creating class in console, R and HTML, etc. So for the class which implements the appender class, the class is called the console class and this implements the appender interface in order to create logs in console. Similarly, the class called the R class 
implements the append interface to create logs in R. Really, the HTML class which implements the appender interface create logs in HTML format. That is what I am trying to say. Continuation of log4j concepts. The appender shows logs in a particular pattern and for that it uses the pattern layout class. The pattern layout basically shows the log information with timestamp and date stamping. And the pattern of the logs created can be changed and this can be changed manually. So that is why I have given this particular line that we can change the pattern layout. The pattern layout of log information created in the HTML format, the pattern layout of log information created in the R format or in the console format or any other format that is supported by log4j. It is better to use uh, the log4j API than using the SOPL that is system.out.println. The reason being that the moment the console is closed, the information that is thrown in the console by using the system.out.println command gets lost. But log information will not get lost even if the log4j API is not used. The log information will be available in the path in which the logging file is created. So in that way, obviously creating a logging information with log4j is better than creating an information in the console of Eclipse using the system.out.println. And these lizards or logging information kept in log in, in kept using log4j can be further analyzed in future for the purpose of understanding the root cause of failure or success. The log4j has seven different logging levels and these log logging levels are in the hierarchy in which it is shown. The highest in the hierarchy is all and the lowest in the hierarchy is fatal. So if we actually set up the logging level at one then we can create logging levels for warn, error and fatal. Similarly, if we create or we configure the logging level at debug, then we can actually log information based on debug info, warn, error, fatal. If we set up the logging level at all, then we can actually create logs for all traces, debug info, warn, error, fatal. And that is what is written in the next two points. And the next slide also the same points are defined that if we configure the logging level to fatal then we can create logs for fatal only because fatal is at the lowest hierarchy. If we configure the logging level to all then we can create logs for all traces debug info warn error fatal because all is at the highest hierarchy. Now for creating logs we need the log4j.properties file or the log4j.xml file. So let us create the log 4j.properties file. So I have the log 4j.properties file. I'll just copy it from here and explain this particular properties file. So I'll go to Eclipse and I will create a new project called as session 38. Click on next, click on finish button, say no to the perspective change. So in this uh, project called session 38, I'm going to create a dot properties file. So right click on the properties, go to new, select the option of others, expand the general folder and highlight the file option. Click on next button. Here we can create the log 4 j dot properties file. We can give any name, so I can give the name as log dot properties. Ensure that the extension is dot properties. You can also create the XML file for logging. The, the extension for XML is dot XML. Now, whatever I have copied, I will paste it out here and explain it to you. This properties file, I'll save it and then explain it to you. So in this particular instance, we define the root logger. The root logger can be in an info or console or R or HTML or TTTC. TTCC. 
then we have to define the appender appender is the interface which create the login information and if you want to create a login information in console this is the package which needs to be used if you want to create the in login information in R this is the package to be used the role finder appender okay belonging to log4j package of Apache if you want to create a login TTCC this is the package to be used and if you want to create a login information in HTML format this is the package to be used and these packages are fixed you cannot change this then we can define the location in which we want to create the log information so let's say I want to create the R log information the R format log information I want to create it in the same project this dot represents the present project it is session 38 log will be nothing but a folder created inside this this particular file will be created which will have information of the log information in the R format similarly this is the location for the TTCC file of login information this will be also created in the same project with session 38 that is the present project and inside the log folder it will create this particular file the HTML format of logging information or the location of the HTML format will be kept in this particular location the location will be the present project followed by the log file a folder followed by this particular file will be created after that the appendix also needs the pattern layout the pattern layout is the pattern in which the log is created so for that we use the pattern layout for console pattern layout this is the package to be used and this is the format of the pattern layout okay and the format is something like this this format can be changed similarly for pattern layout in R this is the package to be used and this is the conversion pattern this pattern layout can be changed for R also similarly for TTCC this is the package to be used for pattern layout and this is the format rather the date format similarly this is the pattern package for your HTML layout pattern layout this is the package rather the title will be this and this is the location info it is to be true out here so this is how the log for log on the log 4 j dot properties file is created now after that we need to go to the project and create a class file so I'll create a class file out here before creating a class file I create a package inside the source folder the package will be called as log 4j to depict the topic being taken and inside this particular package I'll call this as logging info <coughs> call out the main method I want to create the let's say I have an integer a which is equal to 20 okay now I want to basically log this information so for logging the information I have to initiate the login procedure for this particular class to initiate the login information for this particular class we have to use the get logger method of the logger class so there's a method called get logger method So the get logger method is a method of the logger class. So logger dot get logger method. And for which particular class you want to create the logging information for this class? This has to be passed as a string argument out here. And if you hover your mouse over the get logger method this method is used to actually create login information for this class and this method belongs to the logger class which is a class inside the log4j API if you hover your mouse over the get logger the return type is a logger so return will be logger L is equal to this much so after that we can start login now if you go to the log4j dot properties file the <coughs> logging level has started from info 
okay and if we go to our ppt out here go to the last what do you call uh, ppt last page if I set up the login information to info, I can basically create login information for info, warm, error, and fatal. And this log.properties file has been set with the login level with info. So I can change the login level also if I wish to. So I can set up the login level to all. Then I can basically give the login levels from all and etc. Second, so if I set it to all, it means that I can create login information for all traces, debug, info, warm, error, fatal. Okay. Since it is set to info, so let us stick to info. If you want to change it, you can change it at your level. And uh, so this is the login information. So let's say how do you log it? So l dot info. Uh, and we can write down the message as initialize a variable a with the value of 20 and I can also use the CISO statement out here so let us see the difference between uh, CISO and the log 4 j concept i can scissor out the same thing and then i can basically log an in information something like initialize b which is equal to 30 and i can use the l dot info level to initialize a variable b with the value of 30 With the value of 30 I can also use the CISO out here now once the console is closed the information thrown by CISO in the console gets lost but the log information will not get lost I can just pick up the same thing and copy and paste it out here Similarly, I can initialize, let's say, a variable C, which is equal to A plus B. And out here, I can initialize the logging level to info again. And uh, use uh, initialize variable C variable C which is an addition of A plus B the added value of A and B and then I can basically use a CISO command the value of C is concatenate this with C and similarly for this I can also have an info set and I can put the same message now if I run the class file after saving it let us see what I am getting I'm getting the initial as this is part of the CISO statements out here. And you're getting the in console also you're getting the log information. You can see that this is part of your log information. So in console I'm getting it with the timestamp and date and month based on the pattern layout that we have used for the console.